This is 7 News, the voice of the New England. Tonight, three people in hospital after a two-car crash on the New England highway. Farmers received drought funding from the state government. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news out, the Optus boss announces her resignation after a nationwide outage. And inside the celebrations is Australia Taste World Cup cricket glory. 7 News begins now. Good evening. Three people have been taken to Tamworth Hospital after a two-car crash on the New England Highway in Moonbee this morning. Motorists were urged to avoid the area with both directions of the highway closed for several hours. Olivia Babb is in Tamworth for us tonight and Olivia, what is the latest? Maddie, New South Wales Ambulance say that a woman in her 40s is currently in a critical condition, suffering from chest and lower limb injuries. At 10.30 a.m., a Honda CRV and utility collided on the New England Highway. The woman in her 40s, allegedly driving the Honda CRV, was trapped for a short period. The female passenger in her 20s also sustained injuries but is in a stable condition. The female driver of the utility is a teenager and was taken to hospital with a knee injury but is in a stable condition. The circumstances around the accident is under police investigation. And both lanes on the New England Highway have reopened. Thanks for the update, Olivia. Olivia Babb reporting there for us tonight. A motorcyclist has died in hospital after a single vehicle crash in Tamworth. Police located a motorcycle rider with serious head injuries on Kenny Drive West Tamworth on Monday the 13th. Police provided assistance to the 31-year-old before New South Wales Ambulance arrived. He was later airlifted to John Hunter Hospital with critical injuries. Following initial inquiries, police established the man had been riding a Kawasaki motorcycle when he lost control and crashed. A police investigation has now commenced and anyone with information or dash cam footage is urged to contact police or Crime Stoppers. A $250 million drought fund announced by the state government this morning is offering up low interest loans as the ag sector heads into drier times. But low interest or not, some farmers claim covering repayments when strapped for cash is not the solution they want to see. It might be wet and gloomy outside, but wet conditions won't stay for long. And for many producers, it's taking the good with the bad. It's quite ironic that it's uh, raining today, um, although one, one rain doesn't, as we all know, doesn't, doesn't end a drought. Farmer Robert Lamp says adapting and planning is the key. At this stage, many farms are, are much better suited, uh, much better prepared, shall I say, to, to withstand a dry spell. The state government has announced a $250 million drought-ready and resilient fund. Farmers will be able to take a government loan up to $250,000 at 2.5% interest. These loan opportunities underpin farmers' decision-making about how to best manage their, their livestock, their, their horticulture business, their cropping business. It may not be a silver bullet, but Mr Lamph says utilising grants where you can helps during tough times. In the height of the, of the last drought, we were able to, to access some water infrastructure and, and put down a new bore. The money can be used to purchase fodder, transportation costs, stock and domestic water. It has the potential to help people to um, make decisions early, to know that they've got options to make decisions early. The new funding is welcomed by the New South Wales Farmers Association. However, Ms Rankin says they want the government to offer more options for those unable to seek a loan. There are still people coming off, um, you know, sort of rebuilding after the droughts um, of 17 to 19. So um, there's a question for us. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Rural fire service crews are welcoming the recent rain as it's expected to continue for the rest of the week. It's helped further dampen those fires across the region, but the community is still being reminded to stay vigilant. Many residents across parts of the region took cover this morning as the skies opened up. Some areas in the northwest witnessed a downpour, some recording up to 85 millimetres of rain. Thankfully, it was a cruisy night for the state emergency service across the northwest. Despite having some significant heavy rainfalls last night, which was well welcomed across the entirety of the zone, we only had a small number of jobs, so nine that's expanding the entire northwest zone.
promoted by a high pressure system over the Tasman and a deepening in trough across the inland New South Wales. The rain was a major reprieve for rural fire service crews across the state. Around 26 millimetres of rain around Walgett helped further dampen the Hudson fire. Any moisture um, in the air, on the ground, will help us. Uh, the vegetation then will uh, absorb some of that moisture, making it harder to burn. Good news for our water tanks. The rain is expected to keep falling until the middle of next week, but storms could be on the horizon. We could have some lightning that has hit in areas where it didn't get that much rain, which might not pop up for a couple of days, so we definitely need to keep an eye out. I encourage all landowners and road users to be aware of the upcoming weather and to be, make some sensible decisions, making sure that they don't drive into flooded causeways and make sure that they're actually monitoring what is coming through and choose the right times to do and move certain places. Rex Quayle, Seven News. An old vacant building in Tamworth was up in flames yesterday. Just before 5pm, plumes of smoke were seen billowing across the CBD from Gunnedah Road. Fire and rescue crews attended the blaze where they gained entry into the building and contained the flames. Authorities say no one was injured and believe it to be suspicious. I made an investigation and found that a fire had uh, been lit in the office area. It was a disused office space. Of a, of a warehouse. That fire had quickly spread to the floor above a mezzanine level. New South Wales Police are investigating the incident. The federal government has announced it's doubling its roads to recovery funding to $1 billion a year. Local councils are welcoming the decision as they continue to repair their road network after years of weather damage. The state's economy relies heavily on the region's highways and country roads a transport network that gets no relief, leaving many roads in urgent need of repair. There's no way that we can ma maintain uh, 1,300 kilometres of roads uh, on our rate base. It's just impossible to do, so we rely on grants to do that. The federal government announced they will double the funding for the Roads to Recovery program. It will gradually rise from $500 million to $1 billion annually. So every single year uh, over the next four years, the Roads to Recovery uh, funding will increase year on year until it hits a $1 billion, and now that is baked into the budget in perpetuity. The government's Black Spots program, which is used for roads with a high volume of crashes, will increase to $150 million each year. This is a program across the community, again, that local governments can apply to but also community members can nominate a road that they think needs improvements for safety. This announcement comes just days after Minister King declared funding cuts to infrastructure projects across the country, leaving three projects in our region on the chopping block. For LGAs like the Liverpool Plain Shire, the extra funding would see roads not only fixed but upgraded. We were able to maintain the roads to a, to a reasonable standard but not... not um, not where they should be. And gradually over a period of years, uh, that's become worse and worse. Minister King says the money will also help the economy, boosting jobs in the region. We also want to see with this money that local councils are employing locals, that we've got the road crews in place, we've got that local procurement to keep jobs in our communities. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Optus Chief Executive Kelly bayer Rosmarin has stepped down from the top job less than two weeks after the telco giant experienced a nationwide outage. Regional customers were left without internet and mobile connection for around nine hours. Chief Financial Officer Michael Venter has been appointed interim CEO while the search for a replacement begins. New figures show almost half of families aren't enrolling their kids in swim classes, believing their children are too young to benefit. But many believe the rising cost of living is also playing a role in this dangerous new trend. Swim Safer Week has returned for its 2023 season. Until Sunday, more than 1,000 swimming schools across Australia will focus on saving lives. We want to make sure that kids understand self-preservation and how to respond to risks and dangers in the water. We set up stations and the kids move through different areas, uh, reach rescues, throw rescues, our tactile area, which includes um, sensations of what they might walk on underwater. The program is timely with research indicating that 41% of Australian children are currently not enrolled in swimming lessons, 
with 38% of parents believing their children are too young to learn to swim. Drowning happens when kids experience things that they're not used to. So the more opportunity to learn to swim, the more exposure they get to potential situations. They can get in, into trouble pretty quick if they can't swim. So I taught my kids when they were little. Very important. It's um, a, a life skill, really, that um, yeah, for all kids should learn. As the cost of living worsens, state government funding has helped families stay afloat. The New South Wales government launched its first lap program, offering $50 swimming vouchers for children aged between three to six years. There is funding out there available to the schools that they can make available to families as vouchers. And that means that swimming lessons can be subsidised for people that are doing it tough. Reiterating the importance of water safety. Drowning's not the only thing. There's near drownings where kids are damaged for life brain issues, lack of oxygen, spinal injuries, all sorts of things that can go wrong in water. Rochelle Ponikovic, 7 News. Well, Danny is here now for a look at today's weather. And, Danny, we saw some of that much-needed rain today. That's right, guys. We sure did. Hi, everyone. Hope you're well. We saw some solid showers pretty much lasting throughout the day, keeping our temperatures nice and cool. In fact, Armidale and Glen Innes didn't even make it out of the mid-teens. 21 degrees in Narrabri. Gunnedah, you got to a top of 19 degrees. 17 in Inverell. 24 degrees for Moree. We did see some light winds tending east-southeast. Over in Corindai, we got to a top of 19 degrees. More of the mid-teens in Runday. Overnight lows keeping relatively comfortable as well. There is even more rain on the radar, even some storms for some of us. I'll tell you when and where a little later, guys. Good to see the rain. Thanks, Danny. See you later. Up next in 7 News, golfers call for more facilities in the bush. And the face of Tamworth Country Music Festival is announced. And a little later on, this news hour, a major shake-up for Optus as the CEO announcing her resignation. Four people miraculously survive a high-speed crash that left their car a mangled wreck. And fresh hopes of reaching a deal to free some of the hostages kidnapped by Hamas. That's all coming up, 6.30. Welcome back. Former Toyota star maker winner Max Jackson has been announced as the official ambassador of Tamworth Country Music Festival with less than two months until it all kicks off. Organisers are hoping this decision will appeal to a younger audience. Jackson says she wants to help the next generation of Australian country music stars. You can have just bought your first guitar and come down and play the two songs that you know on repeat down in Peel Street and showcase what you can do. Or you can be showing, you know, your first song that you've written or whatever it is. So I think that um, this festival is incredibly important. The festival will run from the 19th to the 28th of January. A group of golfers in the New England northwest are calling for more driving ranges in the bush. Anyone wanting to use the closest facility is forced to drive to the coast. Regional golfers say driving ranges enhance, enhance their skills immensely. We've got endless amounts of land, but golfers in our region are left with nowhere to practice. If you want to have a casual hit, the closest driving range would be on the coast. I'm lucky I live out on a property, so <laughs> there's a lot of lost balls. <laughs> no, we don't practice, we just turn up and hope to play. <laughs> just hope for the best? Yes, we do. The Long Yard Golf Course sold their driving range to developers several years ago. In the New England Northwest, there's just under 30 courses to play, but little room to sharpen their skills or get their eye in before a round. Oh, it's a big problem, yeah. Uh, for golfers, um, we like to be able to warm up, particularly during winter, um, as we have a very cold winter here in Tamworth. It's pretty, pretty important just to try and get your practice reps in if you're trying to improve your game and, and play at the elite level. Golf has exploded as a sport and leisure activity since the start of the COVID pandemic. Golf Australia's last participation report found that 2.7 million Aussies play golf. And 1.2 million of those participants played off course at places like mini golf, simulators or driving ranges. Those involved with the industry say now is the perfect time for investors to capitalise on that hype. But golf's going gangbusters. Uh really since COVID, um, there are so many people wanting to play the game. Um, 
you know, we've uh, started to attract a, a new younger demographic that uh, was always difficult for golf to attract previously. I think it's a great way to just unwind, you know, you can go and have a couple of drinks and hit a couple of balls and it doesn't matter if you hit them well or not. Um, it's just a good day out for everyone, I think. Rex Quayle, Seven News. Up next in 7 News, a former Tamworth local prepares for his second pay-per-view fight of the year. And a young bull rider gears up for the World Rodeo Championships. Welcome back. In just under two weeks' time, a Katingle teenager will jet off to Las Vegas for the World Rodeo Championships. The 14-year-old has stepped up the training in the lead-up, riding some of the meanest junior bulls in the country. Bull riding is taking young Deacon Faulkner from his backyard in Katingle all the way to the bright lights of Las Vegas. When we first met Deacon in May, he was riding on mini bulls, but has since reached a whole new level. I stepped up onto junior bulls. I'm not riding minis anymore. I've been travelling up Queensland a fair bit, hopping on junior bulls because when I go over to Las Vegas, I'm on junior bulls. It's a big jump for the year eight student. Mini bulls, they weigh up to like from 400 up to 500 kilos and with juniors, they weigh up to 700 up to 800. In New South Wales, Deacon is too young to ride the bigger cattle. So him and his family are forced to travel long distances just to get him prepared for the Junior World Rodeo Championships. Down here, um, I can't step up onto junior bulls, um, but up in Queensland I can. I wish they would allow me to step up to junior bulls down here. It hasn't just been his parents paving the way to the US. The entire region has gotten behind him. The community has raised more than $10,000 for the trip. Got what Deke needed out of to get him over there and, um, yeah, can't, can't thank everyone enough. The journey will be new territory for not only Deacon, but mum and dad as well. It'll be good for the three of us because none of us have been on a plane, so it, it's going to be a big experience, you know, so it'll, it'll be awesome, can't wait. I never thought in our wildest dreams five years ago we'd be here about a week and a half of flying out to Vegas. I mean, who would have thought? Max Gent, 7 News. <laughs> Australia has stunned India to claim a record extending sixth cricket World Cup, beating the previously undefeated host nation by six wickets in front of 125,000 fans. Bendemir's Josh Hazelwood finishing the competition on a high, bagging two wickets to help the Australians to victory. This time there seems to be an obvious Nick. Jadija is walking back. The Bendemir Bullet will get three weeks off before the summer with much of the squad backing up on Friday for the first of five T20s against India. Newcastle are one win away from a record fifth consecutive New South Wales Country Championship title after a dominant display in Tamworth. The defending champions secured a clean sweep of their three 50-over group games to qualify for the decider. Meanwhile, Central North claimed a win over North Coastal but bowed out of the tournament with two losses. Well, two fighters from 1-2 Boxing Westside in Tamworth are on their way to the Australian Amateur Boxing League titles. Rowan Martin and Jared Denman will represent the gym in Hobart on Thursday. The pair are looking to add to their trophy cabinet this week after they both secured first place in the Golden Gloves in Brisbane. Former Tamworth local Brandon Grash is preparing for his second pay-per-view fight of the year. The four-time national boxing champion will take on Liam Taliva, the undercard of the Nikita Zoo bout in Newcastle. Brandon is looking fighting fit, dropping an enormous amount of weight since he last entered the ring in September. Brandon, there's not as much of you this time around. You've been working pretty hard by the looks of things. Yeah, look, I've uh, been training pretty hard this time in the gym, this, uh, this camp. It's been uh, infinitely greater than the last camp and, uh, and the results are going to show. So um, if you're tuning in or if you're going to be in Newcastle, you've got no excuse, chuck it on the telly or come down and grab a ticket. He'll take on the ring on Wednesday night. Well, up next in 7 News, Danny's back and she's got your local weather forecast. That's next.
Hello again, time for another check of the weather. On the synoptic chart, troughs are triggering showers and storms over parts of New South Wales. Heavy falls are likely in the east by Wednesday. A high pressure system is keeping much of the southwest dry for now, but by the end of the week, all of this should be spreading across the state and over the border into Queensland, giving everyone a taste of that much needed rain. Taking a look at our rainfall chart now, and it's set to intensify over the next eight days. Up to 60 millimetres set to fall on the New, New England and Northern Table lands. Possible storms tomorrow with a chance of showers around 10 millimetres falling in the afternoon and evening. Temperatures reaching the high 20s, 29 in Marurunda. Walker getting to a top of just 22. Light winds and a high chance of showers for Wednesday. Anywhere between 2 and 15 mils of water expected. Temperatures a few degrees cooler though, 28 degrees in Marurunda, 23 for twin Tenterfield. Armadale also looking at a top of 22 degrees. By Thursday, showers are set to ease a bit Bit. A light breeze sticking around the region around 25 kilometres an hour. We were getting to the top of 26 degrees. Maury, you're looking at a top of 25. A UV rating also set to spike. Inverell getting to a top of 24. Taking a look at the next seven days now and we are pretty much looking at consistent rainfall for the whole week. Around 10 to 15 millimetres of water expected each day. Temperatures sticking to the mid-20s. 27 degrees on Friday. Looking pretty clear for that one day of break before more rain on the weekend. For now, guys, keep that umbrella very handy. Plenty of rain about, but gosh, we need the rain at the minute, don't we, Danny? Definitely do. Thanks. Have a good one. See you later. And that is all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can always catch up on our website or at 7 Plus. Right now, though, Dan has your national news. Have a lovely night. We'll see you again tomorrow night from 6 o'clock. We'll see you there.